right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another segment in our lecture wrap-up series here for Engineering 17, Section 2 at UC Davis the spring quarter of 2014. So this is a uh, wrap-up video from lecture number four. A uh, specific topic of discussion was nodal analysis or using the node voltage method. Um, but keep in mind, again, I have to sort of preface this whole discussion today by uh, being sure everybody was still keen as to what the big picture was, right? So we've been through several kind of topics so far to help us to be able to simplify circuits, resist it, resistive circuits specifically, and helping us to be able to solve, again, remember the core uh, crux of what we're trying to get to in solving any given circuit is that we know what the current and the voltage is across any given particular element so far. So we've gone over series and parallel reductions, how we can uh, do that for resistor networks. We talked about the delta to Y transformation, uh, which can come in handy when you're not always able to just use direct series and parallel rules to get where you need to go. We talked about using the Kirchhoff voltage law and current laws, and then we have Ohm's law. Kind of all these you know, three primary laws are really what's dictating a lot of what we're doing from here on with regards to resistor networks. Uh, because a lot of um, the sort of shortcuts that we get into, especially the node voltage method we're doing today, is all sort of derived from those primary laws. Okay, so getting into the node voltage method, I just wanted to uh, go through a, another, you know, again, sort of unique example, a little bit different than what we did in class, but just to give you some further exposure to how um, we're able to write these uh, node voltage equations based on whatever node we're, we're looking at in the circuit. So here I have our circuit both with uh, two current sources as well as a voltage source up top. And again, a series of uh, resistors that are, are put together here. So again, as we said early on, uh, one key thing that we want to recognize is what is the reference node that we're going to look at. So for this circuit, uh, as, a, as a general rule, the reference that you want to use should be the node, the essential node that has the most branches coming into it. And so in all the circuits that we've seen so far, that's typically this bottom node. As you see, there's four different branches coming in here. Whereas if we look at the, um, uh, at the other essential nodes, so again, you would only have, we only have two other essential nodes. One would be these two combined here, which is really, that's just one node, right? And then another node here. And you could, as you can see, maybe put a reference here, because that also has um, four branches coming into it. But to keep th things kind of, uh, to visualize a little bit better, I typically like to have the reference be down here uh, at the bottom. So then we uh, number our remaining nodes that we need to come up with node voltage equations for. So I'll have node one here and node two over here as it were, and then specify our node voltages. So again, the node voltages are defined as a voltage rise from wherever your reference is. So again, if the reference is down here in this case, uh, this V1 node voltage will be from minus to positive as we go up to the actual node. And then similarly for V2 uh, in this case, uh, from minus to positive. Now the other, uh, we actually need to define then a third node voltage because we have to take care of what's happening up here in this branch as this will impact the currents that's flowing into this node specifically. So I'm also going to define a, uh, a node voltage here, V3, which again is going to be sort of referenced to this specific point, let's say here, but again still referenced back to uh, our reference voltage here. And so, and again, you can kind of think of this reference voltage as like a, a, a null uh, potential source uh, with zero volts. Okay, so now starting here at node one, what we want to do is look at, again, where all the uh, currents would be flowing in or out of this node. And as we're defining currents that are dropping across some resistor, again, we pointed out that we're um, going to write down our equations in the sense of that the, those currents are flowing out. And then if any currents are flowing in, such as is the case of this four amp um, independent source right here, those will be considered as negative quantities for currents that are coming into our um, node. So with uh, V1, so first I wanna think about what is the current that's traveling uh, up in this direction through this two ohm resistor. So now this is gonna be referenced between V1, which is the potential right here, and V3. So that would be V1 minus V3 over the two ohms, <coughs> all right? Okay, so now we can look at what is the current 
traveling out of this node going down this branch. So that would simply be the V1 um, over our four ohm resistor there. Okay, and then if we look out going in this direction through this across the six ohm resistor, again, we'd have V1 minus V2 dropping across the six ohms there. And then the other current that we have, which is traveling uh, from this current source again into this node, which again, this is just one node here, is the four amps, which I said is gonna be a negative quantity because it's flowing into our node. So that's the minus four here, all equal to zero. All right, now similarly, if we, we label that um, node one, and then for node two, we're here. So we can do here if we start uh, maybe looking at going in this to the current that's flowing out in this direction uh, across the six ohm resistor. So that again be V2 minus V1. Two minus V1 over the six ohms. Plus we have maybe the current that's traveling down through this two ohm resistor. So that would be V2 over that two ohms. Plus then let's think about the current that's traveling up through this branch here. And so to define the current here, again, I wanna look at what's happening across this resistor. So again, I need to think about, um, in this case, I'm actually not referencing with uh, V2, but it's gonna still again be, be between V, what's happening between V3 and V1, because these are the two node voltages that are on either side of this two ohm resistor. <laughs> so in this case, I would have plus V3, minus V1 over two, and then minus two equals zero. Again, the minus two is simply from this current source for the current that's traveling through this forearm resistor into that node there. So now you see I have the two node equations which we wanted to get from using the node voltage method, but as you can probably notice, we actually have three different variables, right? Uh, we have V1, V2, and V3. So we need to then set up a third equation to, um, to relate uh, the uh, V3 with V2 in this case. And so we can look again at this and, and specify that V3, as it were, is going to be equal to V2 minus the four volts across this um, independent voltage source right here. So again, that's just comparing the voltage here, uh, which is V2, you're dropping then that four volts and that's gonna be whatever ends up being here at the V3. So that's relating, giving us all the relationships then that we need to solve this uh, using linear algebra, set of a matrix or U substitution or something of the sort. So again, this is just a, another kind of a third alternative um, that, that we didn't specifically see in class, but that could kind of be helpful in hopefully giving you more practice at uh, using the node voltage method. So I hope you kind of understand where we're going from there. Next time we'll be talking about the mesh current method so we'll be moving right along to other techniques. I hope to see you then. Have a good weekend. Stay classy. Words are lost in a second.